Now, as John Cleese used to say, for something completely different, this Tuesday evening at 7.30 at Richardson Auditorium on the campus of Princeton University, you can hear the Princeton-born Korean-American singer Rose Jang. Like many young, talented artists, she has had to make a choice of how she will present and frame her career and talent. A huge sensation in Korea. She has built that career so far on presenting popular music, songs from musicals, well-known opera arias and light classics, as well as Korean and traditional songs in a fashion appealing to a wide crossover audience. She is the first Korean singer to release recordings mixing the various genres. She has been the artist of choice at such occasions as the inauguration of the South Korean president, the Korean all-star baseball game, and the FIFA World Cup. These, among other high-profile public media saturation events. You're listening to her sing a song set to the music of Chopin's Etude Opus 10 No. 3. The song is called Dans la Nuit, Dance of the Night. We met her with her parents and brother at their home in North Jersey. today with uh, Rose Jang. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. One of the main reasons we're doing it on this Saturday is that you will be in Princeton. I will be in Princeton. In Princeton at the, yes. uh, at the McCarter Theater. McCarter Richardson? No, the Richardson, Richardson. Auditorium. Yeah, yeah, we do it both. Like, <laughs> at the Richardson Auditorium at on Princeton, the campus of yeah, Princeton. The campus. It's sort of very cool that you can come back and perform in Princeton. Yes. Princeton is... It is. It is my hometown. I was born and raised in Princeton. I'm a Jersey girl, even though I've lived in Manhattan for over 12 years, and I'm back and forth between Korea and um, New York, obviously, because uh, I'm a singer and my career is taking me all over the world. My father went to Princeton University as well. And this Turn the scope the other way. You've been around the world. You live in New York and you live in Seoul and all the rest of this. What still resonates from your growing up in Princeton? What do you still carry with you both musically and personally from growing up in central New Jersey in the Princeton area? You know, I played the violin from the age of four, and I started playing the piano when I was four and I started training vocally as a young woman, not young woman, as a child, I would say. What resonates to me is really musically, I loved being a singer and, you know, even though I was a violinist and a pianist, vocally I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Well, last point then, sorry, is that you said you would structure this project 
I want to get to some. You've done some pretty big projects so far in your career. <laughs> this project with your story. Yes. Elaborate. Which is my story of being a Korean American, born and raised in America, having lived in New York City. I feel as though I am such a New Yorker. I mean, I was born and raised in New Jersey, but 12 years of living in New York City has made me.、Um, Quite a, I'd say, a Manhattanite.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> Then, having moved to Korea, gave me a very different perspective on life and music. I did not grow up speaking Korean, so my parents lived in America for 45 years. And I was very Americanized growing up. I didn't、mm-hmm. have any Korean friends. All of my friends were Caucasian <laughs> for the most part. And then I moved to Korea, and it was this whole new world. It was very interesting. At first, I was a little afraid of you know, what may happen or what might happen, but I really started to accept the culture and immerse myself in the culture and learn the language and become a, you know, the pop opera singer that I am today. It's thanks to Korea that I've been able to do so many things with my career. Rose Jang singing an arrangement of the traditional Korean song that translates as Riverside. You've done some pretty big gigs, as they would say,、yes. in front of some pretty big crowds.、Yes. Important thing. Two questions there: How do some of these things come about? Yeah. <laughs> and then, is there one that just sticks out at least so far where you say that was really cool? Well, you know, I just finished a tour in Korea here in the States. My father is my manager in Korea, so he gave his pharmaceutical company to my brother and moved to Korea with me five years ago. And my mother was still living here, so he's been back and forth. It's been a struggle, but it's been a wonderful struggle because I couldn't have done anything without my father. He is truly my biggest fan. He just adores me, and so <laughs> I'm his youngest daughter. <laughs> but he has done so much to help me really progress. My career, and he continues to really be my biggest supporter. So, but some of these really high-profile things you've done. Yeah, I've done. So I mean,、many. there's just connections through your father has made. I mean, some of these. I mean. How do you get the get? You get the phone call. You get the text. Yeah. Say, well, you know, because as a rising singer, an up and coming singer in Asia, I was getting these phone calls, and they really didn't have to do with my father's connections. They had more to do with, you know, they thought I was a good singer. I had a reputation for being a good singer, and I performed for the president, and I performed for his inauguration, and so that was a big deal. I recently I sang the national anthem at the Formula One Grand Prix. Apparently, six <laughs> hundred million people in the world view the race, and I sang the national anthem before the final game. And it was an interesting story because there I was, and standing in the rain, singing the national anthem. <laughs> In so, front of a possible six hundred. In, impos- in front of a possible six hundred million. So it's interesting. You said you're U.S. born, gone back to Korea. Yet when you read some of the press about you, it has this connection of Korea ambassador. Yeah. This connection. A global ambassador. Yeah. So I mean, how do you view this? Is this a 
privilege, source of pride? I mean, how are you framing yourself? It's interesting. I just did an interview, which will air. Um, I feel that I started working on a project with my father, and it was actually my father's idea. Since I am ambassador for Korea Tourism, for the Korea Tourism Office, why don't I try and promote Korean culture through Korean music? Mm -hmm. And Korean music can be very beautiful. And so we took some of the folk songs and we played around with them a little bit. You've obviously heard the DVD or the CD and, uh, you know, you've heard the rearrangements and they're very not Korean, right? Right, you just get the flavor. <laughs> you get the flavor, flavor and I'm singing sure. in English and in Korean. Right. Which, so I translated, my father and I sat down, we translated all of the Korean folk songs <laughs> into English, which was not an easy task, I have to say. It was quite arduous, but it was really refreshing to hear some of these beautiful songs done in a style that's completely different from its original style. It was very nice to hear, and a lot of people commented that it was great. They thought it was great, what I'm doing and what I have been doing to promote Korean music to right. the rest of the world. You don't have a crystal ball, but I mean, you, I mean, you can ride this wave as long as you can successfully, and I you know, hope you do. Ten years down the line, 15 years down the line, your career, what would you hope and then sort of, that would be very interesting to be doing this with my talent? In 10 years, I would have to say I definitely really at some point would like to do charity work, charity concerts. I have been doing charity concerts in Korea, but this Princeton concert that I'm doing next Tuesday is not a completely a charity show, but it is sort of a charity show because I'm performing for students that don't have the opportunity to go back home for Christmas. Right. You know, others that don't have the opportunity to see their families, and my father was one of them. My father was studying in America, and his entire family was in Korea, and he was lonely. And so this concert is really for those who are a little bit lonely around the holiday season, <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to doing that. Just doing more of that work. Yeah, doing more okay. of that work. Do you see yourself developing either onto the, the opera stage or the musical stage, mm -hmm. as taking on roles and taking yes. on either an opera or a production of something. My manager and I were talking about this. You've got his acting training. So you yeah, <laughs> exactly. So my manager and I were talking about perhaps doing a Broadway musical or you know something. And yeah. she said, you know, you had the uh, the press kit for it. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's, um, yeah, the crystal ball is, you know, still a little still bit blurry. Cloudy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit cloudy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I end all my Kinez interviews by asking two questions. And the first one is a hypothetical. It says, you could meet someone from the past and chat like we're doing. So we never had a chance to. What's the first name that pops up? Could be in music. It doesn't have to be in music. It's Maria just, Callas. It would be Maria Callas. <laughs> it would. I mean, and that almost sounds contrived, maybe because, I don't know. It's well, not. I mean, it. When you said that, I thought to myself, and I've been reading a lot about Maria Callas and her life as a singer and she's really been so influential to this generation, you know, to the century. People don't appreciate classical music like they used to. Talk about just and sheer just emotion sheer, through she, yeah, her instrument. Yeah, her instrument. I mean, she is an icon and she is an amazing mentor to me because I'm able to listen to her voice and the different colors. I mean, she was this amazing coloratura, obviously, but she was also a mezzo. And, you know, her range was unbelievable. I mean, she could be sweet. She could be brassy. She could be a great actress. I mean, she was just everything. And so I aspire to be half as good as her one day. <laughs> <laughs> I think if she could have cloned herself and done the opera and done the world of all the crossover stuff, she'd have been. Rose Jane, thanks for taking the time. Best of success Tuesday night at Princeton. I hope you have a great full house with a lot of people homesick that you're going to make happy with your music. Thank you. And uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to you, too. Singer Rose Jang. She will be performing her concert of popular songs, songs from musicals, opera arias, and holiday songs this Tuesday evening at 7.30 at Richardson Auditorium on the campus of Princeton University. For tickets, you can call 609-258-5000 or go to utickets at princeton.edu. For more information about Rose, the number is 732-317-8180 or visit her website, rosejang, R-O-S-E-J-A-N-G dot com. We'll go out listening to her sing another arrangement of a traditional Korean song. The song carries the title of a beautiful wildflower in Korea and is titled Doraji, and it is sung by my guest on this second half of Cadenza, Rose Jang. Program note, 
Next Saturday is Christmas Day, and we have lots of great special programming for you. At 3 p.m., you will not hear Cadenza, but you will instead hear a rebroadcast of an evening of readings and carols performed by the choirs of Westminster Choir College at Ryder University, performed at the Princeton University Chapel. Cadenza will return in two weeks' time. And as always, I'm glad you are in the audience today. I hope you'll join me here each week for a chat with the great classical musicians of our area and the globe. Remember, you can catch any recent past cadenza program by going to wwfm.org and clicking on webcasts thanks for listening i'm david osenberg and this has been cadenza here on wwfm the classical network